Welcome to Orchid Presbyterian Church's Wednesday Prayer Time. I'm Mike Aguillon. I'm one of the commissioned lay pastors here at the church. And this morning I want to talk to you about the book of Jonah and the prayer he prays in chapter 2. There is a lot of symbolism going on in the telling of the story of Jonah and the great fish. When we pick up the story in chapter 2 last Sunday, Jonah is in the belly of the great fish in the depths of the sea. The week before, in chapter 1, I recounted the story of fisherman Michael Packard, who was swallowed by a humpback whale not too long ago, and thought, hey, this is it. I'm going to die. I imagine that Jonah had the same thought when he was pitched over the side of that ship. But to his amazement, he did not die. The words in chapter 2 are Jonah's prayer of thanks. It begins with a prayer in verse 1, which reads, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish, and moves to a cry for help in verse 2. I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. Then he describes sinking in the water before he is swallowed by the fish in verses 3 through 6. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I'm driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me, weeds wrapped around about my head. At the root of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars are closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord, my God. He then ends by declaring God as the true source of salvation, saying in verses 7 through 9, When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came to you in your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Chapter 2 then ends with verse 10. And the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. What is striking about these verses is that Jonah is praying while in the belly of the fish. Packard, the lobster fisherman, was saying while in the mouth of the humpback, I'm going to die. Jonah likely had the, that thought as he was going over the side of the ship and then splashing into the ocean and sinking but once he was in the belly of the fish, he was saying, I'm going to live. Some commentators are surprised that Jonah prays a prayer of thanksgiving while he is still in mortar danger. He gives thanks for his safety while still in the belly of a fish. To Jonah, he has been rescued from the breakers, rolling sea, seaweed, and the sandy grave at the bottom of the sea but he is technically still in the ocean. God has yet to say anything to him, and he hasn't repented for running away. Because of this, there is a lot of tension between Jonah's actions and his words of thanksgiving. But just looking at the story as it unfolds, we can say that Jonah gives thanks from inside the fish because he is truly grateful that he is not dead yet. He does not need to wait to reach dry land to feel gratitude. However, there is no evidence that he has lost the deep convictions of his argument about Nineveh. He is grateful without repenting for running because his belie basic beliefs have not changed. He still does not want Nineveh to have the opportunity to repent. So there there's, is this tension between his actions and his words because Jonah is both grateful 
and defiant. We all know he will go to Nineveh since God has made it clear that he must go. For now, he will give thanks for a possible deliverance in a prayer of thanksgiving. What this shows us is the power of praise and thanksgiving in any circumstance for those who turn to God. Even though Jonah does not fully repent, it is enough in this situation that he turns toward God in worship. A recent Gallup poll asked two questions about prayer. It has been said that those who pray will receive help. Do you think this is a true statement or not? And when you have prayed for help, what happened? Did it work or not? To the first question, 71% of all adults said yes. To the second question, 63% said yes. More women than men replied affirmatively to both questions. Apparently, prayer works. We presume that this means that those who prayed got what they asked for. But this whole idea of prayer as something that works bothers us. There is a different test of what works when we pray. Prayer works when it gives us a greater sense of the majesty and glory of God. Prayer works when it leads us to true repentance after confessing sin. Prayer works when it arouses in us an awesome sense of the forgiving grace of God. Prayer works when it engenders profound thanks for every day that we live and makes us realize that life is a gift to be received with gratitude and a task to be pursued with courage. Prayer works when it leads us to prayer for others. Prayer works when it impels us to action on behalf of our brothers and sisters in this world. Prayer works when it leads to new commitments in our Christian pilgrimage. Prayer works when, along with our asking, it leads to our giving. So, how would you have answered those questions in the Gallup poll? Also, when you pray, does it give you a greater sense of the majesty and glory of God? Does it lead you to true repentance after confessing sin? Does it arouse in you an awesome sense of the forgiving grace of God? Does it engender profound thanks for every day that we live and realize that the gift of our life with gratitude? Does it lead you to pray for others and new commitments in our faith walk? When you ask in prayer, does it remind you that you must also give? Remember, to know God is to know oneself, and to know oneself is to know God. If we are honest with ourselves, we will realize that we need help. We cannot do this without our Lord. Our God is standing there with his hands stretched out, offering us his hand. He knows we need help. At the end of Jonah, God says this about Nineveh. And should not I pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left. That is us. There is this great morning prayer that may bring what I just said into perspective. It goes like this. <coughs> Dear God, so far today, all, all right, I've done all right. I haven't gossiped. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't been greedy grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. I'm very thankful for that. But in a few minutes, God, I'm going to get out of bed. <laughs> and from then on, I'm probably going to need a lot of help. 
Amen. Let us pray. Let us now pray for those who are struggling this morning. Loving God, I pray that you will comfort us in our suffering. Lend skill to the hands of our caregivers and healers. Bless the means used for our cure, giving us confidence in the power of your grace, that even when we are afraid, we may put our whole trust in you. We give you our worries and concerns, and we ask for your guidance. We lift up this morning those in our church who are struggling. Steve Averott, who needs to build his strength. Bob Miller and Keith Bowker for recovery from surgery. Randy Judson for a rescheduled and successful surgery. My wife, Kay, who struggles with cancer. Mike Wilson and all those who keep their struggles private. You know who they are, Lord. Lastly, we pray that our friend and sister in Christ, Connie Lozman, is in your peace and loving arms. We give you our worries and concerns and we ask for your guidance. You see it all, the outer circumstances and the inner turmoil. We know that you understand our lives, that sometimes our hearts weighs heavily with trouble. Right now we lay all these things before you. We breathe in, safe in the knowledge that we are held by grace. We breathe out knowing that we are held secure in your arms. And we wait on you. For you are all truth. You are overflowing love. You are a beacon of hope and a fortress of faith. Lord, we choose to be attentive to your voice. May we be alert to your Spirit's guiding as we journey forward with you. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. I thank you for joining me on today's prayer time. I pray that you'll all be safe, and I pray that you will continue to make prayer a focal point in your life that Jesus Christ will be in the center of all things and that you will be led by the Spirit to do His will. So, have a great week. Good day and goodbye.